So first of yes. all, uh, compliments and congratulations to all of you for uh, organizing this event. And uh, yes, Dr. Edna, uh, Uday, Ajit, and all of you who've spoken, and of course, the executing team of uh, Jagdish and Divya, if I heard correctly, it's not it's not an easy event to organize. And I, I like the name Whale Tank. It's it's actually a good name to have. And I got uh, the understanding from Uday that he said, they're no longer, they're not sharks, they're whales. So that's a very interesting point for all the startups who are here. But I think it's a, it's a right time for you to bring them together because uh, this is clearly the time when we have uh, startups who are coming into the fold of this whole ecosystem that has been uh, set up. <clears throat> but it's important for them as they scale up to sustain. And I think that growth and making a global impact, which is really what you all wanted uh, to be the key topic for today, is important if you sustain your growth. And I think for that, uh, bringing together the VCs, bringing together the investors, and more importantly, bringing together a network where they have a peer-to-peer -peer understanding and learning is so very important. Because for all the startups who are here, uh, the new ones who have joined in and you are part of today's meeting, and for those who are the successful ones, <clears throat> and also the experts, the incubator uh, leaders who are here, You'll, you'll remember one thing that when you get onto an entrepreneurial path, it does become a lonely, very lonely journey because there's a lot of risk that's involved. So if you have your mentors, your teammates, your peers, your networks, it keeps you going. It gives you the encouragement to move forward. And that is really what I wanted to share with you in my first slide, that if you're a startup, you must have definitely followed the principles of the five C's because they are so very important. And especially if you look at uh, the tech-based startups and especially the deep tech startups, we see very clearly, and uh, Uday mentioned it so well, that as scientists, we have so much of uh, confidence on our own scientific idea, but it's important for us to see how that moves along that particular journey and becomes an enterprise. And for that, it's very important that you have clarity of the idea that you've chosen to move ahead. Because unless and until you have clarity on that particular idea, how are, how are you going to take it forward? And on this, let me tell you, I do recall that when we started supporting these startups um, more than a decade ago, uh, we started what was, uh, which today is also one of the most uh, sought after scheme, and that is the big uh, grant that we have. It's, it's truly big, may not be big in terms of what they get in the finances. It's a 50 lakh grant. Uh, and the reason it is 50 lakh is because we looked at um, uh, $100,000. And at that point of time, $100,000 was 50 lakhs. So we stuck to that even now, we haven't changed that. Uh, the, con the competition was very, very tough. And uh, many startups would uh, speak to me and they would call me and say, ma'am, increase the grant number. Give, there should be more people who come in. Why was my grant rejected? See, it's very important for us at that point of time when we are taking a decision. And I'm sure uh, the angels and others also do that sort of, a, you know, due diligence when they go in is that if that idea is not really worth moving forward in becoming an enterprise. There's no point for us to start supporting it or funding it there. You must be clear. When you start at an idea stage, many a times they would come to say, it's only an idea today. I really don't know what the market is going to be. But you must. If you start an idea, you must really know what your market's going to be. How are you going to take it through that path otherwise? So I think that's, that is what is uh, very important to see that how are you going to take it ahead? How are you going to uh, move on? Which path are you going to move? You must have confidence on your own ability because this is not really a journey which um, you can sort of take somebody else's idea and move it ahead. It has to be your ability. And based on your own ability is when you 
bring teams together you connect with the mentors you 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 identify the correct resources whether it's the incubation center whether it's the technical unit and yes academic partnerships are very very important so you must have confidence on your own ability to be able to move forward it's a risky journey and i think all those who are here successful entrepreneurs will vouch for this that there are a lot of risks involved so you must have the courage to take that risk there would be many who will pull you down or who will dissuade do you and um, you know little up the um, pathway and they'll say well that's the end of it you need to go back but you must have the courage to take risks because to take the risk you have to have the conviction to accomplish and once you have that conviction you'll find the way around you'll find the way around of taking your idea forward finding the right uh, funding source finding the right incubation center finding the right mentor uh, connecting with the right networks and most importantly uh, finding the right investor and i think today all of you who's come in have come in because you have that conviction to accomplish and if you have that conviction to accomplish and lastly and most importantly a commitment to deliver that's really what the vcs see that's what the investors see from the government we put in an initial grant but i think when you pitch it comes out very clearly from your from your uh, pitch that you have made that are you really following the principles of these five c's and if yes that's really what it takes to move forward having said this i think it gives us a lot of pleasure that today india stands at a position where we are the third largest startup nation in the world and all this has happened over the last few years mainly because of the strong ecosystem that was that has been built because of the startups who came forward following those principles of five c's and also because of a large number of policies and enabling frameworks that were put into place these are numbers which were released by the dpiit in their recent report and obviously all of you are investors and startups and you have these numbers so i'm i'm not going to sort of give you these as new but it's it's very heartening to see these numbers and this is the entire startup ecosystem so it gives us whether it's the funding that has come in whether it's the valuation of these indian startups but yes a lot of this is basically the tech sector the electronic sector but let me tell you the biotech sector is not far behind we've done very very well for the biotech sector i still recall that in 2012 when we were um, yes dr bhan was very correct to mention he was the architect with his vision and we sat and i had the great pleasure of working with him when we put together the strategy of setting up a pirac the whole purpose was this whole area it's a vacuum we had in department of biotechnology supported and created a very strong foundation for biotechnology research whether it was our human resource programs through which we created the skilled human resource or it was the infrastructure that we had set up the cutting edge infrastructure the autonomous institutions it was a very very strong uh, ecosystem for research and then we were moving into translation but if you take research to translation certainly it cannot be completed unless and until you have the industry startups along with you so i think that is what gave us the vision uh, jagdeep i think some mics need to be muted because yes. i get that for yes, that i i muted that okay thank you yeah. so i it was that vision that we had uh, which said there is a vacuum there how do we enter that and for it what we realized is that there was no way that we could pull these young researchers and scientists to to either have spin offs or to get on to an entrepreneurial journey that was never the career path that a scientist would choose after they would do their uh, research so it became important for us and that's how byrac got set up and 
most of you have been associated with Bayrax. I'm not going to go into the details of the journey, but he started with less than 50 startups at that point of time. And today we've crossed 5,000. So it's very heartening to see that this ecosystem today has responded with so much of confidence and the trends that we saw in the bioeconomy over the last couple of years. And yes, definitely the last year has been very, very encouraging. COVID gave an opportunity for the spotlight to be on biotech. But it's also important that while the spotlight went on biotech because of COVID, they delivered. And they delivered because the ecosystem and the foundation was so robust now that you could deliver. And the recent report which um, Bayrak with ABLE has brought out, where they say that we are now at crossed 80 billion um, as our, uh, what the bioeconomy is with the target of 150 billion by 2025. You see the numbers. And when you see the, the report says that it's an unprecedented R&D investment by the industry. I must also say here that the government came forward and also made huge investments in uh, augmenting that infrastructure and augmenting that ecosystem with the gaps that we, uh, we could identify when we were actually putting the ecosystem to test uh, the products for COVID. So it was a, it was a real test bed that we were using COVID as. We had built up a wonderful ecosystem. We had all these industry, academia, partnerships, the startups, and now came the biggest challenge for um, humankind. And that was, how do we deliver the products in the shortest period of time? So the ecosystem stood up, but we did find gaps and the government came forward and, and put in the investment to augment that. And I'm also pleased to let you know that there was a global funders report that was just released about a month back and that has actually identified Department of Biotechnology uh, globally as one of the top five countries, uh, five agencies uh, to be able to put in investments into biotech. So it was very heartening to see that. And where has that investment gone? That investment has gone into augmenting this whole ecosystem. And that's really how you see, of course, biopharma is the largest chunk. But I must say here that biopharma gives us that level of confidence that all the other sectors also have the potential. It's now how we learn from what biopharma has done to bring it into the other sectors as well. The government of India has come forward as a very important stakeholder in working with the, the startups, the industry, the uh, venture capital, the angel network, and it's, it's getting crowded now. And we hope that with this, every sector will be represented. Of course, biotech, it's the Department of Biotechnology and BIRAC, and you have Startup India, you have Atal Innovation Mission, you have Department of Science and Technology, you have METI, you have DRDO doing for defense, you have space now coming forward, you have the automobile sector, you have the textile sector, each one of them. NASCOM, of course, is doing its own bit, working with METI. So we have a large number of these agencies uh, and associations. Let me tell you, and I'm sure many of the entrepreneurs who are here who've done, put in many, many years into their journey would say, we wish we could start our journey from where we did many years back because today what you have as the ecosystem was not there a decade ago. And that really is the strength for us to move forward. What does this ecosystem me done and uh, oh, they very correctly said we still do not have that academia industry partnership as a very strong component and we are striving to do that through the various programs that we do uh, from the government but we do recognize the fact that startups are a very very important bridge between the academia and the industry experience tells us that it's no longer time when you have the academia which develops the technology and says, these are the technologies we have for transfer. Let industries come and take it and commercialize it. It doesn't work that way. These have to be partnerships that get built right from the beginning and startups are, are ideally positioned to be able to work, to take these technologies, to take these ideas, to take this through the POC early validation 
And then of course we have the industry which comes in and takes it forward. And they take it right up to market commercialization. So it's discovery to market commercialization. And that's because you're looking at high risk discovery led innovations. Biotech is all about high risk. But then this is a difficult path, as I said, very risky path, but it's important that we follow this and we do have the, the complete um, infrastructure, the components, the framework that allows for this to move on. We have created this enabling ecosystem and for this, these are, who better than you would recognize this, the very, very important four pillars on which we have to focus if we have to move research from laboratory uh, to commercialization. We have to ensure financing of high-risk innovation, access to risk capital, connecting with stakeholders, access to market. And today I am very pleased that our incubation network that we have set up across the country has come forward to take up the role to do this, um, you know, connecting this or working on all these four pillars and uh, the events like this that you are organizing are again important. One important point to keep in mind is that, as I said, the government has played a very important role in becoming a stakeholder, in becoming a partner. It's no longer just a funding agency. If you look at, and those of you who've been involved with BIRAC or you've been involved with Startup India or um, you know, with other uh, DST, Atal Innovation Mission, you'll see it's not just about handing over a check and saying, well, here is, here is your fund or grant, uh, complete your 18 months or 24 months and come and give us a progress report and we move on. No, it's no longer like that. They are partners with the startups as they move in their journey. And that is why today, when any startup succeeds or moves one ladder forward in their, uh, you know, one step forward in their ladder, it gives us immense, immense pleasure. I still get so pleased when I hear from startups and they say, well, we've moved on to the next phase. We've now got our uh, funding. We've raised funding. We've got the success. It gives immense pleasure because we've been partners in taking this forward. And I think this enabling ecosystem now needs to be strengthened. You also have to remember one thing, that the government was never, ever uh, a venture capital fund. It was never a VC fund. But the government took that risk. They became partners. We've set up fund of funds. And in our discussions with all the VCs, one point that came out very clearly was with the government's participation, we have actually mitigated a lot of risk because there is a lot of technical due diligence. And the government would definitely not put in its money where uh, you know for sure it's not going to make success. Yes, we know that the percentages would be low. But then, as I said, uh, you know, you have a few success stories and that sort of sets off all that you have invested in all these years. And that's really what the government has also done, working closely with you. Today, we have so many funds of funds, whether it's BIRAC, whether it's um, METI fund of funds, whether it's DPIAT or even now uh, Atal Innovation Mission. They're all getting into these fund of funds and partnerships so that we could seed fund, leap fund, many of them. And that's really the role which BIRAC has played. And I'm not going to go into many details. I know you have uh, others from BIRAC, Shishendu and others who are coming in. I'm sure they'll share information with you on each of these schemes, each of these products. But just remember one thing. BIRAC was the first agency which took this very important decision that they start investing even in students. You have an EUA grant, which is given to young uh, students at the, um, the postgraduate level. And now, of course, they're going even into the undergraduate and others, so that you start inculcating that spirit of entrepreneurship in them. Allow them to take that risk and then say, okay, do you want to get onto a PhD and a research pathway or you want to get into an entrepreneurial pathway? 
and of course moving on then to market and we have large number of products and that's the ecosystem all of you come from this ecosystem so i'm not going to spend so much of time a number of incubators is moved up this is a big grant and i'm sure these numbers are outdated now because my slide is about a couple of months old uh, manish sivan and others from bayrak will update it with the latest numbers but what is interesting is that's the appetite for taking new ideas forward each time we put out a call we get large number of applications so we've already excited uh, the researchers to get onto this path of uh, entrepreneurship why do many of them stay back is because of what we've just discussed probably they don't have enough mentorship to be able to guide them how to take their ideas forward so you need both technical and business mentorship you need uh connections with networks and you also need to learn from the success stories and i'm so glad that today you have this five side chat with the successful entrepreneurs because these success stories is nothing like hearing a success story because success obviously multiplies and you know that then gives more opportunities to others to take it forward there's a very strong ecosystem that uh, the government built through a national biopharma mission and many of you in this virtual meeting today have been uh, part of this mission as it built up and the reason i'm sharing this particular slide with you is that when this ecosystem was built we were looking at vaccines and biotherapeutics but i don't think at any point of time any of us ever had an idea that during the life of this mission we would be faced with a crisis or a pandemic like covid and this mission would then stand up and respond to it so you see whatever you invest in gives you returns they may be immediate returns or long term returns but the returns come in is because we had this ecosystem ready we could with great confidence say that when we were asked to give respond to covid we said we will have a scientific based uh, response and we looked at both product development and ecosystem strengthening as i mentioned to you and you all know the wonderful story of how india um, responded to the covid in terms of the science how did we respond who did we rely on it was these researchers from the academia from the industry from the startups these networks which had been built they were taken forward and we we sort of delivered based on that you all know that our uh, diagnostic uh, kit success story is well known in less than 60 days of 90 days we had achieved 100% self sufficiency and here also let me just share a very small uh, incident with you and i think i saw um, uh, some of you involved in this uh, diagnostic story in this virtual gallery and i'm sure many of them would be there i recall that it was in march of 2020 when we realized that we would need a lot of diagnostic kits and i think if i remember correctly it was 26th or 27th of march when the first diagnostic kit of my lab got its uh, clearance from uh, dcgi i had a meeting with all the diagnostic uh, kit uh, startups and other industries and said can you produce these numbers that we are looking at and at that point of time we thought probably 10 lakh um, uh, kits is going to be a large number we didn't realize we were going to move into such large uh, infections the point that came up was yes we have supply chain disruptions but today we can develop the kits but all our reagents are imported now how do we do that and then i quickly had we had a group and we set up a call ccamp came forward all those startups who were were manufacturing reagents came together and enbrick was set up and enbrick uh, those of you who have worked with it i'm sure the c camp team over here will know amtz at vishakhapatnam all these came together we put in a aggregated demand and they gave us an assured supply so you see there were ways in which we could innovate and we could look at models of implementation but we could do this because we had the confidence that we had a pool of startups who could deliver we created a wonderful uh, complete framework for vaccine development all academic research institutes industries came forward and uh, 
they, they started lifting and look at the number of platforms that we could build. This was not just by the industry. The industry partnered with academic institutes, the startups came forward. Each of them were involved in different components. And today we all know our success with the large number of vaccines that we've been able to deliver to our immunization program, the world's largest immunization program for COVID. This has given us confidence that it's not just COVID moving beyond COVID, and this is what our startups uh, responded. A large number of solutions, whether it was sanitizers, whether it was PPs, whether it was masks, whether it was ventilators, uh, you talk about patient monitoring devices, uh, you know, um, the ice box to deliver the vaccines to the last mile, there were a whole lot of them. And all these are now being deployed in other scenarios, which would be beyond COVID. So I think before I conclude, what am I trying to give as a message? That there are key components of an innovation R&D ecosystem, which we have focused on. We focused on the capacities, we've created the human resource, we've created the infrastructure. We have created centers of excellence, translational centers, repositories, biorepositories. That's how the whole COVID program happened. I mean, you look at today, we have everything within the country for COVID. We had the biorepositories here, we had our animal facilities here, we had different models uh, available. Uh, we had every, the amino acid test being done here. So we created a whole lot of shared infrastructure, which was accessible. And even the large companies like, which, which have gone into vaccine manufacturing, they have been looking at, uh, you know, how they could use these uh, collaborations uh, to the advantage of saying, how can we deliver very quickly? And that's really how we went through this very quick process of vaccine development. Our incubation centers, our think tanks, these are all, this is what we've created. Now, if after having created this vibrant ecosystem, which, and I'm sure many of you will agree with me, is today at par with the global best ecosystem that we create. We've created sister innovation hubs. What now is required is, how do we help our startups to scale? How do we give them that confidence that we are with you? What do they need? They need the finances. They need, they need the, the strength behind them to help them to sustain. And I think there are a lot of challenges which we need to address. We have to look at building capacities for future emerging technologies. So it's no longer the low hanging fruits that we have to work on. While we've created an ecosystem, we've, but we still have a challenge in moving technology from lab to commercial scale. Yes, the industry academy a partnership needs to be strengthened. One COVID or a biopharma example is not just enough. We must have this in each sector. We must have more co-development partnerships and every sector now can really give results as the biopharma sector did for COVID. We don't need to have another pandemic to be able to deliver. And how, what we need to do is to get the right skilling done so that we have quality leadership that can help us to do. And of course, we have many ways in which we are trying to do this. We are connecting universities with industry. We have tried to connect the education system with the translation innovation ecosystem, but it's very important that we break the silos. We break those boundaries which exist between academia, between industry, also between disciplines. Many a times there are interdisciplinary needs and I'm so pleased to see that now our incubation centers actually focus on these interdisciplinary areas and you have them because these convergence of disciplines is what's going to give us success. And most importantly, we need to collaborate for impactful delivery of our missions. It's all about connecting, converging and collaborating. And this is what, because you see in COVID times, you talk about India making a global impact. We have done that. Our vaccines have reached all over the world. Our diagnostic kits are today in global markets. So if we can do it for one sector, many other sectors are doing before this. I was speaking to a few startups in the agri sector, in the energy sector. They're already moving out of the, you know, to different uh, places. So what is it that we need to do to achieve this exponential growth? For all the VCs who are here, 
I think this is a message that you must take back. We do need to have a strong innovation ecosystem. It's all about making our startups more innovative. Because if they're more innovative, then they would be able to develop affordable and accessible innovations, which would address not just local, but also global needs. But we have to remember one thing, if it's innovation, we have to look at discovery-based knowledge-driven innovation. We, we've sort of achieved our initial success, we've had low-hanging fruits, but we must invest in disruptive and emerging technologies. That's the future market. If we have to make place for ourselves, for the country, for our startups, we have to find these special niche areas. It is all about high risk, but if there's a high risk, there's a high reward. But then that high reward gives us very, very high return. So our call to action is clearly high risk innovation needs high investment. But remember, I know all the VCs do look at what their returns are going to be. It's those high rewards that we'll get. It's all a matter of time. And if we have to transform exponentially, we have to innovate. Give this message to all the startups that unless and until they innovate, they're not going to make a difference. And we must remember one thing. Innovation is across the borders. It really doesn't have any boundaries or knows no borders. Innovations which have been done in India, we've seen impacts being made in, in other developing countries. And as I've said, in global markets as well. Many of our innovations that we have done for our maternal child, et cetera, you see uh, huge deployments in Africa and other countries. So innovations are common because it's all about that common goal. COVID was a common goal. Monkeypox today is a common goal. One Health is a common goal for all of us. AMR is a common problem. It's not different in India. It's not different in uh, Asian countries. It's not different in, uh, yes, there are certain uh, local problems that we have which we need to address, but it's one healthy world. And for that, we have to work together with our innovation so that we have a sustainable universe. We do need to look at the climate uh, change and others. So thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you and for all the young startups who are here. This is a quote which I like and I would like to close with this, which Albert Einstein had said that a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. So you will make mistakes because you are trying new things, but never give up. Keep trying new things, make a mistake, come back to the drawing board, never take that as a failure, that there is no failure in this you will come back with much more success. And this is the beginning of a wonderful um, you know, interaction you're gonna have with the VCs. I'm sure you'll do well in your pitching. And I'm sure there will be a lot of you who will uh, get your checks, maybe two months or one year down the line. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Edna, uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, all of you, thank you so much.